The Last King, a tale of three young men, a monstrous mystery, and a fight for survival. In a small village nestled deep in a dense forest, three young men set out on a mission to solve the mystery of a monstrous creature that had been terrorizing the village for months. As they delve deeper into the forest, they soon discover that the creature is unlike anything they have ever encountered before. Despite their best efforts, one by one, the young men fall victim to the monster's attacks. However, the last surviving member of the group manages to find a way to defeat the creature and becomes the hero of the village. As time passes, the young man rises to prominence and is eventually crowned as the new king, chosen by the people for his bravery and courage in the face of danger. But even as he enjoys his newfound power and wealth, he never forgets the sacrifice of his friends and the lessons he learned during his perilous journey. The story is a thrilling adventure full of mystery, danger, and ultimately, triumph, as one young man emerges as the unlikely hero and leader of his community. Chapter 1, The Monster Appears It was a dark and stormy night in the small village of Briarwood. The villagers were all huddled in their homes, afraid to venture outside due to the strange noises that had been heard coming from the nearby forest. They knew something was lurking in the woods, but no one had seen it yet. The next morning, the villagers awoke to find their homes destroyed and their livestock missing. Panic spread quickly as they realized that the monster from the forest had come into the village and wreaked havoc. The village elder called for a meeting of the town council to discuss how to deal with the monster. Three young men, best friends since childhood, sat in on the council meeting. They listened to the elders' plans but found them lacking. The elders wanted to offer sacrifices to appease the monster, but the young men knew this would only make things worse. They decided to take matters into their own hands and set out to find and kill the monster. The young men, named Ben, Tom, and Jake, were brave but inexperienced in monster hunting. They packed supplies, weapons, and set out into the dense forest, guided only by rumors and legends of the creature. As they traveled deeper into the forest, they encountered various obstacles and challenges. They had to cross raging rivers, climb steep cliffs, and navigate through dense thorn bushes. They also encountered other dangerous creatures, such as giant spiders and venomous snakes. Despite the challenges, the young men persevered, determined to find the monster and put an end to its terror. They camped out in the forest, taking turns keeping watch throughout the night. One night, as they were sitting around the campfire, they heard a strange noise coming from the darkness. They quickly doused the fire and armed themselves, ready for whatever was coming. Suddenly, a giant, shadowy figure emerged from the trees. It was the monster they had been searching for. It stood at least eight feet tall, with razor-sharp claws and glowing red eyes. The young men froze in fear, unsure of how to proceed. The monster let out a deafening roar, causing the ground to shake beneath their feet. It charged towards them, and the young men scrambled to defend themselves. Ben swung his sword at the monster, but it deflected it with its massive arm. Tom tried to shoot it with his crossbow, but it missed. Jake attempted to distract the monster, but it was too focused on attacking. The monster lunged at the young men, knocking them off their feet. It swiped at them with its claws, narrowly missing each time. They knew they had to act fast if they wanted to survive. In a desperate move, Ben threw a smoke bomb at the monster's feet, causing it to cough and sputter. Tom took advantage of the distraction and shot an arrow at the monster's eye, causing it to roar in pain. Jake then ran towards the monster and plunged his sword into its chest. The monster let out a final, blood-curdling scream before collapsing to the ground, dead. The young men breathed a sigh of relief, but they knew their mission wasn't over yet. They had to find a way to make it back to the village alive and tell the villagers of their victory. As they packed up their campsite and prepared to leave, they realized that they had become a little wiser, a little stronger, and a little closer as friends. They knew that their journey had changed them forever, and they were ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Chapter 2, 
into the forest. After their encounter with the monster, the young men continued their journey deeper into the forest, unsure of what other dangers lay ahead. They walked in silence, each lost in their own thoughts, until Tom spoke up. We have to be careful, he said, looking around nervously. There could be more monsters out here. Ben nodded in agreement. We need to stay alert and stick together. We can't afford to let our guard down. As they walked, they noticed that the forest grew thicker and more ominous. The trees were taller, and the leaves were a darker shade of green. The air grew colder, and a thick fog began to settle around them. Jake spoke up. This doesn't feel right. We should turn back. But Ben was determined. No, we have to keep going. We're almost there. I can feel it. They continued walking until they came across a river. The water was murky and brown, and the current was strong. They knew they had to cross it to continue their journey. Tom suggested they build a raft, and they worked together to construct it using branches and vines. They paddled across the river, but halfway through the journey, the raft started to break apart. They panicked, knowing that falling into the water could mean certain death. Jake grabbed onto a branch, trying to steady the raft. Ben and Tom worked quickly to repair the raft, and they managed to make it to the other side. They collapsed onto the ground, panting and relieved. As they rested, they noticed strange markings on the trees around them. They looked like claw marks, but they were too large to be from any animal they knew of. What kind of creature could make these marks? Tom wondered aloud. I don't know, Ben replied. But we have to stay focused. We can't let anything distract us from our mission. As they continued walking, they heard strange noises coming from the trees. Branches snapped, and leaves rustled. They drew their weapons, ready for whatever was coming. Suddenly, a group of giant spiders emerged from the trees. They were the size of horses, with long, hairy legs and sharp fangs. The young men fought bravely, but the spiders were too powerful. They had to retreat, running as fast as they could through the forest. They eventually found a small cave and took shelter inside. They rested for a while, trying to catch their breath. We can't keep going like this, Jake said. We need a better plan. Ben nodded. I agree. We need to think this through. They spent the night in the cave, discussing their options. They knew that they had to keep going, but they also knew that they couldn't keep fighting every creature they came across. The next morning, they set out again, determined to find a way through the forest. They walked carefully, keeping an eye out for any signs of danger. As they walked, they noticed that the forest grew lighter, and the air grew warmer. They knew they were getting closer to their destination. Suddenly, they heard a loud roar coming from ahead of them. They drew their weapons, ready for whatever was coming next. But this time, they were ready. They were determined to face whatever challenge lay ahead and emerge victorious. Chapter 3, A Glimpse of the Monster The young men continued their journey through the forest, cautiously making their way towards their goal. They knew that the monster they were hunting was powerful and dangerous, and they couldn't afford to let their guard down. As they walked, they heard strange noises coming from the trees around them. Leaves rustled, and branches snapped. They drew their weapons, ready for whatever was coming. Suddenly, they caught a glimpse of the monster through the trees. It was massive, with dark, scaly skin and glowing red eyes. It let out a deafening roar that shook the ground beneath them. The young men were terrified, but they knew they had to stay strong. They had to face the monster head-on and defeat it once and for all. They continued walking, following the sounds of the monster's roar. As they got closer, they could feel their hearts racing with fear and anticipation. Finally, they came to a clearing in the forest. In the center of the clearing stood the monster, towering over them with its massive form. 
Its eyes glowed with an otherworldly light, and its sharp claws gleamed in the sunlight. The young men drew their weapons and prepared to attack. They charged towards the monster, hoping to catch it off guard. But the monster was ready for them. It let out a fierce roar and lashed out with its massive claws, sending the young men flying through the air. They landed hard on the ground, bruised and battered. But they didn't give up. They got back up, determined to continue the fight. They charged towards the monster again, dodging its attacks and striking back with all their might. They fought for what felt like hours, until finally, they landed a decisive blow. The monster let out a deafening roar and collapsed onto the ground, its massive form still and lifeless. The young men breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that they had finally defeated the monster. But they also knew that their journey was far from over. They had to continue on, facing new challenges and dangers as they made their way towards their ultimate goal. They had to stay strong and united, relying on each other for support and guidance. As they set out once again, they knew that they had what it took to emerge victorious. They had faced their fears and come out on top, and nothing could stand in their way now. Chapter 4, The First Attack The young men continued their journey through the forest, but they couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. They kept a close eye on their surroundings, knowing that danger could strike at any moment. As they walked, they heard a rustling in the bushes behind them. They turned around, weapons at the ready, but there was nothing there. Suddenly, they heard a growl from above. They looked up to see a massive winged creature descending upon them. The young men barely had time to react before the creature attacked. It swooped down, claws extended, and raked its sharp talons across one of the young men's arms. He cried out in pain, stumbling back and dropping his weapon. The other two young men sprang into action, attacking the creature with all their might. They fought with ferocity, determined to protect their friend and drive the creature away. But it was powerful, and it fought back with equal force. The battle was intense, and the young men knew that they were in trouble. They had never faced a creature like this before, and they were struggling to keep up. Just when it seemed like all was lost, the young men spotted an opening. The creature was distracted, and they seized the opportunity to strike. They lunged forward, weapons at the ready, and struck the creature with a flurry of blows. It let out a deafening roar and took to the skies, fleeing into the distance. The young men were battered and bruised, but they had emerged victorious once again. They tended to their friend's wounds and continued on their journey, more determined than ever to complete their quest. But they knew that they couldn't let their guard down. They had just faced their first attack, and they knew that it wouldn't be the last. They had to stay alert and ready for whatever came next. Chapter 5, The Hunt Intensifies The young men continued their journey through the forest, but they could feel the tension mounting. They had faced their first attack, and they knew that the hunt for the monster was only going to get more intense. As they walked, they came across a group of travelers. The travelers warned them of a dark force that had been lurking in the forest, attacking anyone who crossed its path. The young men knew that this force was the monster they were hunting. They thanked the travelers for their warning and continued on their way. They soon came across a village that had been decimated by the monster. The villagers had fled, leaving behind their homes and possessions. The young men searched the village, hoping to find clues that would lead them to the monster. They found signs of a struggle, as well as strange footprints that they knew belonged to the creature. They followed the footprints deep into the forest, until they came across a cave. The cave was dark and foreboding, and the young men knew that it was the monster's lair. They cautiously made their way into the cave, weapons at the ready. The cave was filled with a noxious odor, and they could hear strange sounds coming from the depths. As they made their way deeper into the cave, they came across a group of smaller monsters. The monsters were vicious, but the young men were able to defeat them with their weapons. Finally, they came to the heart of the cave, where the monster was waiting for them. 
It was massive, with razor-sharp claws and glowing eyes that pierced through the darkness. The young men charged towards the monster, ready for battle. They fought with all their might, dodging its attacks and striking back with their weapons. The battle was intense, and the young men knew that they were fighting for their lives. But they refused to give up, knowing that they had come too far to fail. Finally, they landed a decisive blow, and the monster let out a deafening roar. It collapsed onto the ground, its massive form still and lifeless. The young men breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that they had taken a significant step forward in their quest. But they also knew that there was still much work to be done. They left the cave and continued on their journey, knowing that there were more challenges and dangers ahead. But they also knew that they had each other, and that together, they could overcome anything. Chapter 6, A Final Showdown The young men continued their journey, their hearts filled with hope and determination. They knew that they were close to their goal, but they also knew that the final showdown with the monster would be the most challenging yet. As they walked, they came across an old wise woman. The woman had lived in the forest for many years and had seen many battles fought against the monster. The young men asked the wise woman for advice, and she told them that the monster's power came from a magical gem that it kept hidden in its lair. The young men knew that they had to get their hands on the gem if they wanted to defeat the monster once and for all. They thanked the wise woman and continued on their journey. Finally, they arrived at the monster's lair. They cautiously made their way inside, knowing that they had to find the gem without alerting the monster. They searched the lair from top to bottom, but they could not find the gem. Just when they thought all was lost, they heard a strange noise coming from deep within the cave. They cautiously made their way towards the source of the noise, and they soon came across the monster. It was holding the gem in its massive claws, and it let out a deafening roar when it spotted the young men. The battle was fierce, with the young men dodging the monster's attacks and striking back with all their might. But they knew that they could not defeat the monster without getting their hands on the gem. Finally, one of the young men saw an opportunity. He distracted the monster while the other two snuck up behind it and grabbed the gem. The monster let out a final roar before collapsing onto the ground, its power drained by the loss of the gem. The young men emerged victorious, knowing that they had achieved their goal. They left the lair and returned to the village, where they were hailed as heroes. But their victory was bittersweet. One of the young men had been mortally wounded in the final battle, and he knew that he did not have much time left. He asked the other two young men to take the gem and use it to become the kings that the village needed. The other two young men protested, saying that they could not rule without him. But he insisted, telling them that he had always known that he was not meant to be a king. He had been on this journey to prove himself, and he had done that. Now it was their turn to lead. With tears in their eyes, the other two young men accepted the gem and promised to honor their fallen friend's memory by ruling with justice and compassion. And so, the young men parted ways, knowing that they had been forever changed by their journey. They had faced countless challenges and overcome impossible odds, and they had emerged stronger for it. Chapter 7, The Sacrifice The village was in mourning after the loss of one of their young men, but the other two knew that they had a duty to fulfill. They took the gem and ascended to the throne, becoming the kings that the village had long needed. At first, they ruled with justice and compassion, just as they had promised their fallen friend. The village prospered under their leadership, and the people were happy. But as time passed, the two kings began to disagree on how to rule. One believed in taking a hard-line approach to maintain order, while the other believed in a more lenient approach, allowing the people more freedom. Their disagreements soon turned into arguments, and the kingdom became divided. The people began to take sides, and soon there was talk of rebellion. The two kings knew that they had to find a way to come together and rule as one, but they could not see eye to eye. They both believed that their way was the right way, and they refused to compromise. In the end, 
It was the sacrifice of their fallen friend that brought them back together. They realized that they had lost sight of the values that had brought them on their journey in the first place bravery, unity, and selflessness. They knew that they had to make a sacrifice, just as their fallen friend had done. They could not rule the kingdom as two separate kings, each with their own agenda. They had to work together, as one, for the good of the people. And so, they decided to merge their kingdoms into one, with each king taking on a specific role. One would focus on maintaining order, while the other would focus on promoting growth and innovation. It was not an easy decision, but it was the right one. The people of the kingdom came together once again, united under the leadership of their two kings. They looked back on their journey, and they realized that they had learned a valuable lesson. It was not just about defeating a monster or becoming kings. It was about working together, sacrificing for the greater good, and never losing sight of the values that truly matter. And so, the kingdom flourished under the leadership of their two kings, and the memory of their fallen friend was honored for generations to come. Chapter 8 The New King Years had passed since the defeat of the monster and the merging of the two kingdoms. The two kings had grown old and it was time for them to pass on their legacy to a new generation. They decided to hold a competition to determine who would be the next king. The competition would test the contestants' bravery, intelligence, and leadership skills. Many young men from the village came forward to compete, eager to prove themselves and become the next king. One of the contestants was a young man named Rian. He had always admired the two kings and dreamed of shoes to fill, but he was ready for the challenge.